Hi. Hey, this evening I am out in the forest getting ready to photograph a uh, hiker in those trees right back there, those big old growth ponderosas. And what I want to do is get a vertical shot with a small hiker in there, kind of similar to one that I took years ago that, that actually uh, sold quite well. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be hiding a flash behind a tree back there and I'm going to be using a Pocket Wizard TT1 and TT5, which is the radio trigger that allows me to use the TTL features of the flash unit so I can adjust the flash exposure. So uh, we're getting ready to do that. Then I'm going to bracket my shutter speed so that I can get lighter, lighter and darker ambient exposures. And uh, so here's what the equipment looks like. Okay, so this is the TT1 sitting in my hot shoe here. Very simple. You just slide it in the hot shoe, turn it on, and you have the option of a couple channels. Okay, on my light stand here, I have a bracket for holding a flash or attaching it to a light stand. I like that because I can rotate it up and down and that sort of thing. And then I have the TT5 sitting in here, and same thing as the TT1, you turn it on, you match the channels, but it also has the ABC for your various uh, groups that you program through your uh, Canon flash. And one thing that I do have on here is a, that's a filter. Unfortunately for the Canon photographers, the 580 or the Canon flashes in general give off a little too much RF noise, so you have to have a filter in here, and you also have to put a hood on it, which is a little bit of an inconvenience, um, but you know, it's something we have to do to keep the range on the flash. So put that on there, then you get a lot more range out of it if you add that. A little bit of an inconvenience, but hey, it helps. So now we're ready to take this down there and set it up. Okay, so I'm going to head on down, find my tree to hide this thing behind. Okay, so I'm going to place the light stand with the flash right behind this big ponderosa. Set it up, and my hiker is going to be right out in here. So I want to be out of view of my camera back there. So I think this is the spot right here. We'll set up the light stand and make sure I can't see it. Raise it up just a little bit. We'll go ahead and turn it on. Get the hood out of the way, turn on the TT5, and we're ready to shoot. Okay, I'm getting all framed up and focused uh, on a preset spot where I'm going to have the hiker stand. Then I'll direct them into position, and uh, looks like we're ready to go. Vertical shot with all these trees, hiker down there, and exposed by the flash. So, let's get shooting. Okay, well, I've got quite a good series here, bracketed my shutter speed, I've got my flash exposure set really well, so everything's great there, and we got, uh, we got our picture, so let's get out of here. Mosquitoes are coming out and going to eat me alive here in a minute, so we're going to head back to the uh, computer and we'll show you some of the pictures. Okay, so I've returned to the digital darkroom, and here is uh, a collection of some of the images that I've photographed, and as you can see, I went in and I just basically just gave a little bit of a rating. One, for the most part, are just images I wanted to show. And then as I get down further through my list, the ones that I really like a lot, I've uh, added up to five stars. You know, a typical bridge Lightroom rating system. Mostly just to show you what I'm doing here. So, first thing I want to mention, as you know, uh, if you're using flash, that your shutter speed controls the ambient light exposure, but not the flash exposure. And here's a couple examples. So here is this first image right here showing over here in the window. And it's one-sixth of a second at f8. Okay. And you can see the flash in there if you blow this up big using the loop. Then I come in and I change to one-thirteenth of a second at f8. That's a minus one in the ambient. Now it proves that the flash is not quite bright enough. So I went into the uh, Pocket Wizard the TT1, TT5 using the uh, radio syncing signal, and I went into my flash and I increased the uh, flash exposure compensation a little bit by one stop to brighten up the subject. And as you can see here, now it's a little bit too hot, but also notice that I did an uh, F5.6 at 1 50th, so I changed my exposure combination just a little bit. So if I come back over here, and, and what I don't like is the difference between the flash and the ambient exposure. 
So I came back in here and I changed my aperture again to f4 and I went to 1 60th. So instead of being a minus 2, like this one is a minus 2 on the ambient exposure only, this is a minus 1 and 2 th or minus 1 and a third. So the ambient is two thirds of a stop brighter than it was in the previous image. The flash is still hot. So I go back in and that's when I toned it down and uh, it's a perfect flash exposure on her now. I still feel this might be just a hair dark, but maybe not. This is awful close to what I want. I want the flash to make the subject stand out in the background very, very well. So I'm back to minus two on the ambient, minus one and two thirds might be good. So I shot a bunch at this combination. I opened up my shutter speed a little bit more. But now I want to show you some of the other options I went to. I also decided I liked the hiker uh, facing this direction as well. So I did move the flash from behind this tree to behind this one. And here you can hardly see that anything's going on. Plus, the sun, which was supposed to be setting, came out through the cl clouds and is dappling on the trees here a little bit. And I didn't like that, so I had to wait. So then I got shooting and I decided to have the hiker hiking and moving and then have the flash sort of freeze them in position. My new exposure combination is 3.2 at 100 so that I can get the hiker to be you know pretty frozen. And here, same kind of thing. The flash is looking pretty good. This is pretty close to being a normal exposure here. The meter says it's minus one third of a stop. So then I came over and decided I was going to try a couple different combinations. So here I'm minus two thirds of a stop and I really like this a lot better. The flash is just brightening the subject a little bit. Same thing here. I think this looks really, really good. Back to being only minus one third on the ambient. And now I'm seeing a little bit of blur here as the sun is getting uh, darker and I probably should be going up on my ISO to give me a faster shutter speed. Then I went in, after I was done with the hiker going through the forest, I decided to pose. And here, I'm at a minus one on the ambient exposure. The hiker's just positioned and posing. The flash is lighting them really, really nicely. I also really liked this one where the hiker's not aggressively hiking, but hiking, you know, a little bit in the position, you might say. And I went back and not quite as dark on the ambient, not quite as dark here, not quite as dark here, and then right there. So I am probably torn between uh, this one, this one, and this one. I think they all look really good. I'm happy with the exposure. It's balanced nicely. And as I mentioned, I want the flash to make the subject stand out from the background, but just a little bit to avoid what I call the flashed look. So anyway, let's uh, go into Photoshop and look at the Photoshop files on these finished images. So as I mentioned earlier in this video, I wanted to sort of reshoot an image that I took a long time ago in the Sequoia forests of California. And uh, this image here, which also has a very small hiker, was captured about 15 years ago and made the cover of this magazine. And actually, uh, was a big seller with my uh, stock photo agency for a number of years. And so I really wanted to kind of create the same thing. But now that we had wireless flash photography ability these days, I thought it might be more fun uh, and create a more dynamic image by using flash hidden in a scene, or what I call stash a flash. The difference between the photo that I'm recently captured and this photo is the trees are substantially bigger in these sequoia groves in down in California and so you know that's a big difference but that's really what was the idea behind uh, these two images so let's take a look at them here this is the first one and if you take a look here it really looks pretty good the minus exposure on the shutter speed or darkening the ambient light and getting the flash exposure just perfectly being able to adjust that from the camera using the TT1 and TT5 made for a pretty good uh, overall shot. What I ended up doing here is cleaning it up by creating another background layer here but notice these tree branches and stuff that are kind of sticking down. I just went in and used the spot healing brush here and go in make a little bit bigger here 
and went in and kind of did this on some of these just to kind of clean it up and make it a little bit more of a perfect picture and I don't have an ethical problem with doing this at all I know if I had sold this picture commercially they would do exactly the same thing so I've done that here and this uh, layer showing now uh, basically gets rid of all of those branches then I went in and I added just a little bit of darkness to it just a little bit more so you can see on the curves here I just pulled it down a tiny little bit for just a little bit more impact. The best part is I can always go back in and change it if I felt like I went too much, but I'm actually quite happy with that. So then I came in and I selected another image of the hiker moving through the forest and pretty much did the same thing. This is a brighter exposure and again I cleaned up the branches on a separate layer and then went in and darkened it down just a little bit more to really make the hiker pop out. And so if you look, the flash exposure here is pretty darn good. And blow it up here and you can see flash exposure is good. The flash is hidden behind the tree here. It's probably about this height. It is adding a little light to the ground. If I really thought that was a problem, I could go back in and burn that in just a little bit if I wanted to. But really, I don't think uh, there's that much of a problem here with this image as it sits right here. So... Anyway, that's how I use the Pocket Wizard TT1, TT5 with a Canon 580EX2 hiding the flash behind a tree to light the hiker in the forest. So, happy shooting! Do you have a flash and you are so confused by all the features and functions you've decided you hate your flash? Well, stop. If you have any of these flash models, we have developed an online course that will teach you everything you need to know about Flash. And by the end of the course, you will learn to love your Flash. Mastering Flash Photography, offered only at Great Photography Courses.